Hello, everyone. We're going to get going in a sec, let people get on in, get logged in. And if anyone wants to test the chat, test the questions, functions here, go ahead and you can get your Get your questions loaded in now. We'll take a little bit of time at the end to answer those. But uh, it can be a bit freeform too. If you have any questions that you want us to answer in the moment, take a pause, answer questions. Absolutely. And uh, yeah. welcome in. I'm Drew Palace with the Security Title Guarantee Corporation of Baltimore. Our guest today, as I've posted a few times here, is Erica Peterson from for research. She is the head honcho of editors. She is the editorial director at October Research. She uh, oversees the editors for all five of October Research's publications. And the first time that I, I, I read the voice of the title agent two years ago, and it was a, it was a great report. And this guest in this uh, topic today might be a little bit different from what you typically see in a webinar. Um, but I wanted to give Erica the opportunity to tell her story and tell October Research's story after telling the stories of everyone else in title insurance for, for so long. We're going to cover uh, Erica's background. We're going to cover the voice of the title agent, the 2024 version, the 14th annual voice of the title agent. And then we're going to get into the title reports newer series title insurance at work. We're going to talk about, uh, again, the five publications, the how they, uh, Erica and her team balance five different publications, uh, a webinar series, a an annual conference in NS3, a couple other initiatives. And um, yeah, I guess we can, we can get into it. And in, at the, at the end of this, hopefully you will have some inside information from the chief editor herself to better tell a story about title insurance with the spotlight being on us after the State of the Union. So, Erica, thank you. Welcome in. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. Yeah, I'm always on the other side. I'm yeah, I'm always on the other side, which I'm kind of comfortable on the other side. But but it is fun being able to uh, share. So I like that. Thank you. Very welcome. Very welcome. Uh, why don't you, to, you know, give, give us your background, uh, if you have any core memories as a journalist coming up that maybe made you the journalist that you are today or the editor that you are today, or um, you know, any recent stories that you've covered that are especially special to you? Sure. Well, um, I have been in journalism ooh, for over 30 years now. Um, yeah, I, I was in, I was in newspapers for, for a long time. Uh, that's what I got into in college. Um, I had a, I had a journalism professor who told me, eh, so your reporting is okay, but you are a great editor. So get into editing. I said, okay. And so far, so far, so good. Um, yeah, so I've worked on daily newspapers. I've worked on weekly newspapers. I worked on a monthly community paper. Um, basically, I love, love, love hearing people's stories. It is my favorite thing. Um, having somebody who does something really well or having somebody who's very passionate about something um, sit down and tell you about it is fantastic because you can tell that they they are energized and that they are excited to share. And I mean, think about it. How often in your day does somebody come up and say, tell me everything about your job? You know, that doesn't happen often. So um, yeah, that is something I really, really enjoy. So I've been with October Research now for about three years. Um, yeah, like it seems like everybody else in the industry, I came from outside the industry. But I came aboard as the editor of the title, uh, excuse me, the title report. Uh, yeah, about three, yeah, three, three and a half years ago now. And um, I can tell you, uh, so, you know, when I was working in newspapers, you know, I was sort of a general assignment. So I could go from covering something happening in court 
to go talk to the woman who just grew an award-winning zucchini, right? I mean, it was just sort of all over the place. So I would have to learn things on the fly. Um, and what I really appreciated when I came here is that the title industry is very generous with its information. Um, you know, I was able to get up to speed quickly because people were patient and people were generous and people are really, really excited about sharing their knowledge. Um, so yeah, so then I moved over to, to um, editorial director, which is what I'm doing now. I supervise all five of our um, publications. And so I got up to speed on title. And so now I've, you know, so then after that, I got to get up to, to speed on mortgage lending and on court cases and on um, appraisal and valuation. Basically, we cover all parts of the real estate transaction here. So some, you know, I love learning. So it's, so it's been working out pretty well for me so far. Great, great. Uh, and the five publications, uh, you want to give us a, a quick overview on all five and then. Uh... Absolutely. Absolutely. So the, so I started with the title uh, report. That is our publication that covers the title industry, obviously. You know, we uh, focus on the um, industry happenings, on uh, mergers, acquisitions, on things happening in the industry. Uh, it's a very, very business uh, focused uh, publication. And then we've got the legal description, which covers more the compliance and regulation side, as well as the court side. So basically, what are the courts saying about um, issues happening in title? What are state state uh, regulators talking about? What are state legislations passing? So sort of all of that more compliance-based issues. Um, and then we've got Dodd-Frank update, and that covers the mortgage lending side. Um, again, focusing on regulation, focusing on compliance. So when the CFPB sends out yet another guidance memo, uh, you know we are there to talk to to experts in the field to explain, okay, so what is the saying and how how is this going to impact you and your operation? Um, we've got RESPA news, which obviously focuses on RESPA um, and all the happenings there. Uh, you know, it does seem like uh, we're getting more. RESPA cases popping up again. It seems like that's more on regulators' radar again. Um, and then we've got valuation review, which covers the appraisal and valuation industry. So, so again, our por portfolio aims to cover all parts of the real estate transaction. And so we've got those. I think if you want to flip on the next slide oh, okay. this is, no no it's okay this is sort of what i talked about how yeah how we how we want to educate we want to empower on all parts of the real estate transaction and again um october research that's us who has all of these we pride ourselves on being the independent provider of all of this information that is very very important to us um and then again on the next slide it gets more into our portfolio. So I talked about all of our publications, but we also have webinars. Uh, we have special reports that, you know, will dive into more specific um, issues. We have libraries and resource centers on our RESPA news and the legal description websites. We have a pretty robust collection of case, case documents. Uh, I'm sorry, court documents, case law um, of all of those cases that are um, important in the industry. Uh, and we have seminars, or, or we have, excuse me, we have uh, conferences. Uh, we are working now on our big annual conference, um, NS3, the National Settlement Services Summit, and that's happening here shortly at the end of May. Um, and that is a annual conference where we 
boy, we, we, we offer a lot of educational sessions and seminars. We have a lot of networking opportunities. Um, so we're working on that now. And we also started uh, a couple of years ago, our Women's Leadership Summit, um, fo focusing on those issues. So again, uh, we have, our goal is to, to educate and to share. And so we wanna do that through all possible avenues through publications, through reports, through webinars, through conferences. Um, so yeah, that's us. It's a lot, it's, and it's a lot of, <laughs> a lot to keep track of, but uh, you have uh, traditional publication, and you have uh, the in-person events, and you have webinars on a digital platform, so it's a pretty balanced, uh, dispersal of, I guess, any information on the closing process that you need to know. So, absolutely. The, the acronym we have, we got, does uh, title insurance at work have an acronym, or is VOTA the only one that has the acronym? Well, VOTA is sort of internal. We call it VOTA. I think most of the people who read the uh, the title report have heard of Voice of the Title Agent. Um, again, I don't know outside of here if a whole lot of people know VOTA, but hopefully people have heard Voice of the um, Title Agent. And that is definitely the title report's uh, one of its biggest projects of the year. Uh, I'm sure that uh, John Delosier, who's the editor, is uh, happy to have that in his rearview mirror for the year. Um, but yes, that is our big product, project. So um, every February, we open up the annual survey and we ask questions on all areas of the settlement services industry. Um, what I find particularly helpful is that again, we've been doing this for 14 years and we generally keep the same questions. So we have a really rich um, 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 history so we can compare in the past and so we can see trends and we can see what's changing and we can see what's shifting. Um, we do add some questions every year uh, depending on what's happening. Um, I guess it would be no surprise that this year we definitely asked more about cybersecurity and cyber insurance after everything that happened at the end of last year. Um, but yeah, so we have that survey open all month and then John buckles down and goes through all of those uh, survey answers and again compares it to to older uh, or past surveys in order to sort of give those results context um, and then puts out the the report which uh, hopefully everybody's seen it and if you haven't you can you can download it for free and take a take a look at basically what people in the industry are saying. And again, I think that's that's a great part of it too. Is that this is coming from people who actually work in the industry. It's not coming from talking heads. It's not. It's coming from people who say, "Here's what I do day in and day out. Here is my. I mean, it's my uh, passion. It's my life. And I can tell you what's happening for us. What is working for us." what positives we're seeing, what challenges we're seeing. Um, I think it provides a, a really good picture um, of the industry. And I guess in an industry where the product doesn't change a whole lot, the situations change and the stories change. We'll get into the stories later, but you know, some of the stories write themselves with the data and the responses. And I guess, should we, Pop over to the next slide here and yeah, talk about sure. some of the results, some of the surprises. Absolutely. Yeah. Again, as I said, we uh, we asked a couple more questions about cybersecurity and cyber threats, questions that we hadn't asked in the past. Um, you know, one of our questions we ask what people's top top concerns are um, in the industry, and it wasn't a surprise to us that the numbers we saw uh, 22 22 percent there was a 22% increase year over year on people who were concerned about cyber threat, threats. And again, with everything that happened last year, um, both 
both in our industry and outside of our industry. I, you know, I wasn't surprised to see that. And again, we saw uh, hikes in concerns about data and escrow data and escrow security and compliance issues. All of those went up year over year. Um, we also asked how often um, title agents prevent a cybercrime. You know, uh, um, ha have an attempt and stop it. And looking at the numbers. I was really surprised that that high, 18%, said that they prevent a cybercrime 21 or more times a month. So basically every day. That's a lot. I mean, I knew it was a lot, but trying to imagine doing my job while also trying to avoid cybercrime at least once a day, that was um, surprising. And the other thing that was surprising to me is, you know, again, we asked if anybody had experienced either price increases or more exclusions in the past year in their cyber insurance policies. Again, I wasn't surprised to see over half, but I was surprised that 16% said they don't even have a cyber insurance policy. I found that, I found that surprising. Now, I know part of that can come from the fact that, uh, cyber insurance policies don't always cover everything that you're expecting them to cover but still uh i i was surprised i found that i i found that a high number um i i i think there is still somewhat um again from what we're hearing maybe from some smaller um operations that feeling that it's not going to happen to me and I don't know. In this day and age, I I I I find that I find that a surprising attitude. I find that a surprising attitude. So the it won't happen to me. I, I guess that's kind of in line with the rhetoric of the people that are anti owners policies. <laughs> it won't, I won't have to deal with the claim. So if the agents that are adopting that it won't happen to me mindset should probably uh take a look in the mirror a bit and just be more yeah. serious about <laughs> cyber security okay. insurance policy exactly exactly i mean i definitely did find that find that surprising again though i do want to add that that caveat that uh you know comments comments in our survey because we we also we also have space for people to to write in comments or write in things and i you know we did see people saying well you know it doesn't seem like cyber insurance covers a whole heck of a lot so why am i going to get it if i get it and i have an attack and i'm still not protected so that is something something to um to um keep in mind as well and the other, um, I think on the next slide, the other um, part of the survey that jumped out too, and again, keep in mind that this was back in February, uh, you know, where we asked if we, if they thought there was going to be increased uh, regulatory scrutiny. Um, I mean, if you take a look at that, yeah, that's 77% uh, said they expected higher levels of scrutiny from both federal and state. And that was even before the uh, president sort of shined that spotlight on the industry. So, um, yeah, I think I think that was a concern. I think that is a concern, and I think we're seeing that happen. We're de we're definitely seeing more of a spotlight on the industry and more scrutiny of the industry. So, yeah, I thought that was pretty present to uh, say that, and then. Yeah, I don't know about anybody else, but I was sitting at home watching the State of the Union, and I did not expect to hear the words "title insurance" pop up. I was I was definitely surprised. Yeah, I think that I don't know if it was poor copywriting ahead of time, but talking about uh, you know, title insurance being lumped in with the junk fees and, and setting specific instances of title insurance you know, lenders policies and refinances and in the same breath saying that they want to help first-time home buyers and those two things certainly aren't uh 
aren't connected. You're a first time home buyer, you're not going to do a refinance. So a bit confusing. Yeah, and it had been too. I mean, uh, the CFPB has definitely said that they're cracking down on junk fees. And then in one of their posts, when they were giving examples of junk fees, they point out title insurance. So it's clear that there is more scrutiny and more, uh, yeah, more s scrutiny of the industry. And it's also clear uh, maybe there is a need for some more education about what exactly title insurance does. I mean, again, um, you know, like as you talked about, what they're saying they want to do and what they're actually doing doesn't seem to be aligned. Um, and again, to call title insurance a junk fee, uh, I think just about everybody in the industry knows it's a heck of a lot more than, than a junk fee. And so what we see is that the, this is a prime opportunity to get some more education about uh, title insurance and about the um, industry out there. And again, we see that as our role here at October Research is to, is to get that knowledge and to get that information out there. Um, because if you hear the president and you're hearing sound bites out there, you know, junk fees, junk fees, junk fees. Um, how do you combat that? How do you how do you combat that? And we see that as getting information out there, getting get getting accurate information out there, uh, mm -hmm. getting information not. I mean, I'm sure I'm sure if I was president, I'd have to know a whole lot about a whole lot. But I think there's people in the industry who know more about title insurance than than perhaps the uh, president. So to be able to get that information from people who who are in the industry day in and day out, um, I think that's important. And so we saw an opportunity here uh, for us to be able to do that. Um, and that is, you had talked about earlier, our title insurance at work. Um, mm -hmm. And that is something that we started in the title uh, report. Um, I think there's a, another slide if you wanted to go ahead. Thank you. <laughs> so basically what we're doing is we are inviting uh, people, we, we're inviting title agents and we're inviting settlement service providers to tell us your stories. Send in your stories and tell us how title insurance is affecting consumers, how it is protecting uh, um, home buyers, because again, I know it's hard to explain what what our industry does. I, sh I should say what your your industry does. Um, you know, when I got this job and people asked me what I did, and I said I was you know writing about title insurance. Oh, what's that? Trying to explain it, you know, and kind of seeing you know eyes glaze over. Right? It's 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 hard to explain well what happens here. So, but sharing a story of, hey, here's a situation where if somebody didn't have title insurance, they would have been on the hook for $300,000. That explains it, right? And so right. that is what we are we're doing here. Uh, we're, we're asking people to share their stories. Um, you can go to the uh, titlereport.com and share story and then we'll post it in our research center and the idea is that people and and those stories are open to to everybody and the idea is that people can read those stories and can share those stories so when people ask you so what does title insurance do here is a really clear illustrative story that tells exactly what title insurance does and i think that goes a long way toward um, toward that education piece. Yeah. Right, so you can come here, uh, share yeah. stories, read the other stories, yeah. So yeah, we got four of them so far. Mm -hmm. We got a couple couple links here. Uh, here's the kind of the intro to the series mm -hmm. and what prompted this. Uh, you know, when you're telling a story, you don't know what details to leave out or what you know, what 
someone has the capacity to listen to and understand. And it's like title insurance is the, uh, if title insurance was a Facebook relation status, it would say it's complicated. <laughs> uh, it's perfect, yeah. <laughs> but it's like, you, you, the, the product doesn't change, the stories change, the situations change. Everyone has war stories and horror stories and, and those need to be told. And um, if you get into the, you know, the technical aspect of title insurance, maybe you lose people. But if you keep uh, falling back on the it's cheap or it's a one time payment or uh, it's these other you know, simple one liners that, that really don't do the product justice because it is complicated and it's situational and you know it's, it's tough to, to really tell um you know a, a good story i guess i mean maybe for some people it's it's easier i don't want to lump everybody in but maybe as a whole there there's an opportunity to tell better stories about title insurance so that people that either have the bias of it being a scam or they're going to see the president saying that it, title insurance is one of three items of the closing process that is a junk fee and they didn't have a bias either way but now that seed's already been planted that it's a junk fee um yeah but i guess from a, a, a like a fact checking standpoint how many uh going back to writing your high school or college papers how many sources do you need to to gather before you say yes this thing is a junk fee or you know the opposite um and then you know do you want to get into some of your opinions on the research aspect of a story and then some of the elements of a story sure um so for your first question i think that goes back to me talking about how we pride ourselves on being the independent news source which for me that means so okay so here's a so so here's a topic uh you know people talking about title insurance being junk fees um so we're going to talk to all sides of that issue we're going to talk to or or try to get information from the cfpb explaining you know why are you saying that why do you see it that way what is your concern about it and then we're going to talk to to people in the industry um you know it's it's we don't pick a side that's i think that's not doing our job our job is to say here's an issue and here's all the information that that you need here's information from people who are saying here's information from people who are who are who are who are disagreeing here's some stats here's some data take all of this information and come up with a plan that works for you and your market um yeah as far as uh sources yeah so i guess it depends on the type of story i mean if I'm doing a feature story about Drew Palace and who he is and, and what he does, I'm probably going to be talking a lot to uh, Drew, right? You know, if it's a personality profile, I'm probably going to be talking to, to, to you, maybe only one source. But if I'm doing a news story, um, I would say, I mean, the standard is a minimum of three sources, a minimum of three sources you know more is better but a minimum of three sources you know like it goes back to that old saying if you tell me i have a tail okay i have a tail but if three people tell me i have a tail i'm probably going to turn around turn around and take a look right i mean the more people who are telling you, you something the more weight that that holds so yeah yeah i would say source wise at least three more is better um yeah and that's and again a wide or a broad selection of um sources from all from all different parts of the industry from all from all different parts of the um um issue at hand so does the i guess you'd like to find the you'd like to exclusively find information that supports your point and 
probably doesn't do you any good on the flip side to ignore information that is apparent and out there that is counter to your point. So uh, the pe you know, people that say low claims payout instances or, or rates or percentage, um, I guess as, as part of it, you need to be balanced. Is that you get those sources because you need to be balanced and, and have a, a good retort for it, or you know, what, what's the journalistic approach there with you know sources and balance? Well, yes. I mean, again, we're you know our job is to be as accurate, to be as thorough, to be as clear as uh, we can, and I mean it. It seems to me that you know people, you see, you know, like if you're talking about any sort of issue, you know, what's the best flavor ice cream, right? There's going to be a lot of opinions. People are going to have a lot of opinions on that. Um, so our job is to share. Well, here's what some people say. Here's what some other people say. You know, maybe we'll take a look at the stats and say, if you want to see what the most, you know, popular being sold, it's this. Um, you know, the the idea is we're not looking for the right answer per se. I don't know that there is a right answer. It's more, here's all the information that's out there. Um, yeah, it goes back to what I said, you know, we don't pick a side. Uh, we say, here's an issue and it's a complicated issue and there's a lot of people who have a lot of opinions on it and a lot of, a lot of people who have passionate opinions on it. Um, you know, there are people who think that they are 100% correct. Okay, so we're going to tell you what they say. And then there's a, somebody on the other side who also thinks that they are 100% correct. Okay, here's what they say. Take all of that information again and, and formulate what works for, uh, what, what works best for you in your situation. I think that's, that's how I see our job. Right. And uh, a note that we talked about in our prep calls was eliminate the, the jargon in the industry, industry ease, the acronyms. Cut, when cut I got here, that was the hardest thing. I could not keep track of all of these acronyms, right? And I certainly have gotten better at it. But again, um, when we're trying to be clear, and again, it's not so much our job here. When I am, when, when, when we're writing about the industry to the industry, well, we all we all know all of those jargons, right? We can talk shop. It's when you're talking about writing pieces for for outside or trying to educate people outside of the industry. That's when you have to be careful, I think, that you're being clear and that you're not getting bogged down in the jargon or you're not assuming everybody understands what you're talking about. And again, sure. that's a bit different here, you know, when we you know, talking talking about Respa News, you know, we have an editor who's an attorney and she's writing stories about court cases to other um, attorneys. You know, they, they have an understanding there already. Um, but if she's, you know, writing a story for, for, for someone like me, who's not an attorney, she may, she may have to sort of explain things in a different way. Sure. And I guess, you, you have a, a lot of different systems. You know, a story should have a, you know, there, a podcast I listen to is the the Marketing Made Simple podcast. I guess that's maybe more marketing and entertainment. But you know, then you have the uh, the news story uh, approach, and there's probably some differences there. But um, one that was <laughs> Start, it starts off, the character has a problem, meets the guide, the guy gives them the plan, the plan prompts a call to action, and then the final step is, here's the result. So that's maybe m more entertainment, maybe more of an entertainment well, yeah, story, yeah, I mean, but do you have any, any, um, any personal structures like that? That, that you've used over the years or that could help people um, create, help uh, you know, workshop some stories? 
Well, I guess, I mean, I guess I can even go back to what I was taught way back when in journalism, right? Um, you want to kind of write in an inverted pyramid style. You need to get all of the information up top. Who are we talking about? What, where, when, you know, all of that um, up top. Because if I have to work, if I start reading and I'm not sure I understand and I've got to read half a page until I know what's going on, I'm probably not going to stick around. Um, I think, I think especially in this day and age where it seems, you know, the days of, you know, long newspaper stories are not here anymore. They're short, they're, they're, they're concise. Uh, so I think it's really important to be really clear, clear from the get go, clearly explain here's what, what we're talking about. Um, because I think, yeah, I think if you, I think if you take too long to get to the point, I think you're going to lose readers. Yeah, if, if you take too long, and then uh, I guess in our our efforts when these, these conversations probably come up, where if you're not acknowledging the other person's side, you're going to lose them too. You're going to immediately get into uh, I'm not waiting because i want to hear your point i'm waiting so i can say my next counter point and there's there's no gen you know, genuine uh accepting of, of the other person's ideas um so you know when we all get together as title insurance professionals or real estate professionals those in-person conversations and those sharing of stories beyond the title insurance at work series you know, at, at conferences, at events. Um, with NS3, what are what, what are the general goals for the event? And you know, for this year, what specific topics are you uh, looking forward to hearing about or you know, presenting to the attendees? What, what do you want to say about NS3? Sure. Well, um, we have it um, coming up here. I think you have another slide if you want to flip it. It's got some of the details. Uh, but we're we're getting we're getting close. Uh, it's at the end of May, May 21st through 23rd down in Naples. Um, and so, you know, it, you know, we have here on the graphic that we say NS3 is at the center, and that's how we see it: is that we're at the center of the real estate transaction. Meaning, we get we try to get people from all sides of the real estate transaction there. Uh, you know, title agents, underwriters, executives, attorneys, uh, lenders, um, te technology and solution providers, compliance people, um, and especially regulators. Because it seems like this, I think one of the great things about NS3 is it gives it gives a chance for the industry and the regulators to sit down and talk to to each other, so that you know we can better under so the industry can better understand what the regulators are taking a look at and what they're concerned about, and re and regulators can understand how exactly this industry works and, and you know and what these types of changes what the actual impact on the industry is. Um, so yes, it is. I mean, I would say. Um, if you haven't gone, you should. It's fantastic. Uh, we offer so many sessions on a wide variety of topics. Um, again, we have a lot of regulators planning to come this year, which is always uh, fantastic. And we also have a lot of uh, first-time speakers, which I think is also fantastic. I mean, certainly we've got some veterans there speaking, but I think to get fresh voices and to get newer perspectives on things, I think is always fantastic. Um, we also offer um, at NS3 a lot of networking opportunities. And I mean, again and again, we hear from attendees that that's a big draw for them. Again, this opportunity, as you said, to sit down and speak and talk and share. Uh, you can pick up CECLE credits there. Uh, yeah, and it's fun. It's fun. I, I, I always enjoy 
I always enjoy all the conversations I get there. I, I always enjoy all the opportunities I get to get some FaceTime in with people to, yeah, have some fun. So uh, topic wise, again, we've got, uh, as I said, uh, regulators is going to be, uh, we're going to have that in certainly um, tech is always, you know, kind of a, yeah, we've, uh, yeah, a couple of articles here on yeah, the site. Yeah, exactly. Uh, already are talking about AI, talking about different tech. Uh, as the slide said, if you go to, uh, if you can go back to the slide super quick, um, NS3. Yes, that that will give you all of the information. It'll give you the agenda. It'll give you the speakers. It'll give you the schedule. It'll give you um, oh. All right. All right. Perfect. <laughs> it'll, do uh, it. it'll, it'll give you uh, registration information, all of those good things. Yeah. If you go over on the left to speakers, it can show you some of the people, yeah, the schedules, it can show you. So if you haven't gone, I would encourage you to, to, uh, to uh, check it out. Let's see. I saw a couple articles that, uh, AI was going to be a big topic, but you said uh, regulators, and, and you said yeah, you, you had exactly. um, a pretty soup to nuts list of topics as well. So it's not just a uh, exactly. Yeah. We've got we've here. got compliance. We've got innovation. We've got basically a pretty well-rounded uh, um, um, agenda, and we touch a lot of information. Yeah, for sure. So I would encourage people to go to the website to uh, check it out. Yeah, I, I'm sure there's a an element of competition with the speaking engagements too. Nobody wants to look worse than somebody else when they're when they're talking. So I'm sure one you know, puts their best foot forward. So. Uh, I guess uh, probably wrap up a little bit. If anyone has any questions, uh, put them in the, in the chat box now. But yeah. I want to give Eric a, a, a chance to, to you know, if anyone was on the fence about becoming a member, a subscriber, what's the proper term? I screwed it up. I'm sorry, Erica. No, no, no. It's okay. Subscriber. So Subscribers. yeah. So, so if you if you are um, interested in any of our publications and you should be, uh, you can get free, sign up for free emails and you'll get free emails uh, twice or three times a week, depending. And the emails have, have our stories. Some of them are um, open for everybody and some of them are, are closed only for subscribers. And if you subscribe, not not only do you get access to all the stories, but you get access to a lot of those things I talked about at the beginning. All of our special special reports, all of our um, all of our excuse me, all of our webinars, uh, special reports, our libraries, our resource centers, basically everything that we offer. Um, have already put out correct when you talk about a library they have access to all previous previously published information and webinars yes yes exactly we have yeah and yes i'm sorry thank you here i am using jargon libraries okay. meaning like a collection of all of our information so like a collection of all of our court court cases or like a uh, collection of all of our cybersecurity stories uh, we're we're doing a lot of stories about excess equity, and uh, following the Supreme Court's uh, Hennepin County um, ruling, talking about excess equity. And so, in t in the legal description, we have something that has all of our stories there, and we're and we're coming up on a webinar on that. So, I guess I would say that being a subscriber certainly gives you access to stories, but it gives you an access to uh, to basically basically everything we have. Um, and if you go to any of our websites there, you can see some of that information. Um, yeah, and I mean, we always want to hear from people. You know, we get stories from, from all sorts of sources. 
but you know many times it's uh, someone will shoot me an email and say hey hey have you heard about this um, so my please feel free I think on the last slide I hope hopefully I stuck my email in there there yeah, hooray. So yes, feel free to send me an email if you've got questions. Yeah, I know we covered a lot of ground here. If you've got questions on anything, if you, you know, have a story that we should be doing, um, please, please, please share. Yeah, how do people get published? How do people get their stories into uh, any of the publications? Um, you know, I've, one of the couple of points you, you mentioned in our prep conversations were that it, it's you, you have a you're cautious in some ways because title insurance can be so local from a regulatory standpoint and a lot of others. Um, what what do you personally look for in a story as an editor? You, you receive however many emails a day. Hey, here's my story. Here's my press release. Here's my expansion news. Here's my whatever. What, what piques your interest as an editor or any of your you know, five editors? Wow, I, I think all five of our editors, I think um, what what piques our interest? Basically, basically everything. I mean, we're all learners here and we all want to learn more. Um, so, you know, sending us information and then being willing to, to speak with us, to be able to give us some more information. Um, you know, we always want our subject subject matter experts, you know, people who we can go to when we're doing a story on a certain issue. Um, so yes, I, I would say send the information in, but also give us an opportunity to get to know you, to meet you so we can, you know, find out what, you know, what your experience is, uh, what your knowledge base is, so that you can help us out in future stories. Um, what piques my interest, man, I always I always wanna hear something new. I always wanna hear what's happening. Um, give me the dirt. <laughs> I said, give me the dirt. Me the dirt. <laughs> I mean, basically, right? No, I always wanna hear what's happening. It's like, yeah, like I get paid to talk to people all day. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, we definitely, we definitely want to get to get to know as many people as we can so then we can share your story so we can share here's here's this program that's that's working really well for us here's this you know here are our best practices uh i think so much in the industry i think everybody learns from everybody else and yes it is super local so it's it's hard to to say here's something that's going to work for for everybody but I think, I think even if it's not your market, I think even if it's not exactly your market, you can still learn so much. So I think it's a great opportunity to to share that knowledge, to share share th those examples. Um, yeah. So please, if you have any ideas, if you've got any questions, if you want to chat, shoot me an email. I'd love it. Very good. Do you have any any final thoughts? Any uh, current event thoughts uh, you know, as we move forward? Do, do, are, are there any topics that you anticipate coming across your your editor's desk or editor's computer, whatever the new age term is? What's on the horizon for? Well, I mean, um, again, as we talked about industry. the regular as, as as we talked about the regulatory scrutiny, I, yeah, I mean, certainly keeping an eye on. On what's happening on on what the regulators are taking a look at you know i know cfpb is asking for comments about closing costs and comments um from people about that process so we're you know we're going to be following that um we're waiting to hear doing what we're doing with uh the title insurance at work so that's what we're uh, title people that's what the title and real estate people are combating is that the cfpb is looking for uh stories that are the opposite of what we're gathering for title insurance at work? I don't know if I would say combating, but I think I would say to get, to help sort of get the full story out there, to help get the full story out there. So CFPB is getting, it sounds like is asking for input from, from, from home buyers. So then we can provide the input 
from the tidal side. So again, I think it, it goes towards sending out all of that information to be able to, to give a true uh, sure. view. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess uh, I'll, I'll let you continue to be independent and unbiased, but uh, I guess as far as title people <laughs> go, we want to uh, just uh, know your enemy. Is that the Rage Against the Machine song? <laughs> so, well, I, that's good insight. It's, you know, it's always good to know the data, but just like you, you provided in, in, in Voda, it's good to know the stories. It's good to know how to tell a compelling story. Uh, it's good to know what is on the horizon. So I, I really appreciate you taking some time. Again, I, I've been looking forward to hearing your story for, for quite a while. And I hope we have a chance to, to circle back on uh, you know, sharing the details of Voda in the future, if it's a annual. I'm just going to put you on the spot right here in front of our. Front of our <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, no, I appreciate it. Um, I look forward to, to seeing more of the stories on uh, the title insurance of work. And fantastic. Uh, if anyone has any questions, send uh, Erica. Is, you know, don't don't bug her. Don't send her five emails a day. But um, <laughs> she's she's very accommodating. Happy to share stories, share input. Uh, if you want to look into membership options, uh, you know where to find them. We share that information. And we have uh, should be a, a survey being sent out, for, short four-question survey. If you liked what you heard, if you didn't, if you have any, uh, any recommendations, let us know. I can handle it, good, bad, and different. So any final, final words, Erica? Thank you again for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we'll be in touch. We'll and I hope touch. I see everybody and I hope I see everybody down in Naples for for NS3. It's gonna yeah. be fantastic. Yeah, great, great event every year, as I'm sure everyone's called. So thanks again, everybody. Appreciate thanks. it. See you next time.